a reading from the book The Secret of Light by Walter Russell. And I'm starting just right somewhere along the, the beginning of it. The ascent of man from the dark to the light is the forever repetitive play of man on the planet of suns. When all mankind has found the light, the play will be finished. Likewise, this planet will be finished as an abode for man. It will then be rolled off into its ever-expanding orbit, while Venus is gradually being rolled into place to become the stage for the next repetition of the ascent of man in this solar system. We actors of the play must, therefore, be content with the lines of the play revealed to each of us in light. We must likewise be ever joyous at our continuous transformation as each one of us learns our part line by line, the better to fulfill it worthily. All parts of the play are experiences which become the action of the play. All man's experiences are part of his unfolding. Each experience is a part of his journey from the dark to the light. All experiences are steps in that journey to his mountain top of glory. All experiences, therefore, are good experiences. There is naught but good. There is no evil. There is naught but life. There is no death. Now these are the words God gave Russell. I am the one whole, the all. Glorified thou me, the one whom I am, for I am all, and no other is. I, the sexless one, am unity. What I am thou art, for thou art me, thou art the whole. Glorify thyself, for in so doing thou art glorifying me. I, the one whole, am knowing mind. I exist to think. All thinking is light of my knowing, but my thinking is not me. I am creator, creating with my thinking. Out of my light of knowing are my two lights of thinking born as sexed pairs of opposites for repetition as sex pairs of opposites. To think is to create. I create with light. Nothing is which is not light. I think ideal. Light registereth my ideal in the two sex lights of my thinking, and form is born in the image of my thinking. Form hath no existence, nor have my imaginings. These exist not, for they are not me. I alone existeth, I the all. I create my imaged body with the inbreathing of my pulsing universe of me. My universe is my image, but my image is not me. All things are my image, but they are not me, even though I am in them and they in me. Now this may sound confusing, but Russell goes on in his own way of saying what, what God has just said. He makes it a little more plain to understand it. So this next chapter is called Creator and Creation. God, the Creator, is all that there is, all that exists. God's creating universe of matter in motion appears to exist. To our senses, it sequentially disappears to reappear. It has no reality. It but simulates reality through the illusion of two-way projected lights in motion. God, the Creator, is the one being the one person, the one mind, the one thinker, the one self, the one life, the one soul, the one power, the one reality. God's creation is the image pattern form of God's imagining, built in his image. It is the body of God, the record of his thinking, created by him for expressing the oneness of life, love, mind, soul, and power, which is in him alone. The one light, God is light. God is universal mind. Mind is light. Mind knows. Mind thinks what it knows. 
mind thinks in two opposed lights simultaneously projected from their centering white light source and sequentially repeated in cycles. God's thinking and imagining are qualities of God's knowing. God's knowing mind is timeless and still. So also are God's thinking and imagining timeless and still. So likewise, man's thinking and imagining are as timeless and still as is his knowing. Stillness never can be motion or become motion, but it can appear to be. Motion merely seems, but stillness always is. The universal equilibrium can never be other than its own balance, but it can seem to be. The illusion which is motion springs from stillness and returns to stillness. This is a universe of rest. There is naught but rest in the universe. Mind knows its one ideal of creation as one whole. Mind thinks its one whole ideal into seeming parts, hence the illusion of motion, which we call creation, and the illusion of substance, which we call matter. Matter, motion, time, change, dimension, and substance have no existence. The light of knowing mind alone exists. There is but one mind and one thinker. The one light of knowing mind is self of God. It is the universal self which centers all omnipresent self-creating bodies of God's selves. This self-creating universe is the mind-imagined body of God and record of God's thinking. We can know God. We cannot know his body, but we can see it. Likewise, we can know man. We cannot know the body of man, but we can see it. What God is, man is. God and man are one. Our seeming duality. We seemingly live in two universes, the still cosmic mind universe of knowing and the moving thoughts of mind rhythmic wave universe of sensing. We cannot sense the cosmic universe of God's knowing, nor can we know the thought wave universe of God's thinking. The cosmic mind universe of the one light of all knowing is all that is. The vibrating thought wave universe of sensing merely seems. The cosmic God light, the one still light of God is the cosmic light which watches over all creating things at countless points locatable by man but invisible to man. Man's senses have misled him into believing in a force called magnetism which attracts compass needles and lifts tons of steel. These phenomena of motion are due to electricity and not to magnetism. The cosmic light is absolutely still. It neither attracts nor repels. We now need to comprehend the nature and purpose of the magnetic poles of suns, planets, and all other moving extensions of the one light. Likewise, we need to know the nature and purpose of the two electric workers which interweave this light mirage of seeming motion and dissolve it sequentially for rebuilding. This will give a foundation of knowledge to man which will enable him to see behind the illusions which deceive his senses. The time has come in the history of man's journey from his material jungle to his spiritual mountaintop when he, it is imperative that he must live more and more in the cosmic light universe of knowing and less in the electric wave universe of sensing. Man must know that his power lies in the stillness of his centering self and not in the motion by means of which he manifests that stillness. He must know that his self is God in him.